Okay, so I think some of you may have uh, saw news of my work. <laughs> yeah, so I basically, I built a HDMI ISA graphics card based on the existing open source project. Lah. So apparently it became viral. Lah. <laughs> so you can see there are many sites that cover it, Hacker Day, Top Subway, Hackstore, and it was number one on Hacker News for a few hours. Okay, so that's why I decided to share. Okay, so before that, right, I need to talk a bit about some uh, computer graphics history and some background because there's a lot of terms that I'll be using and I don't think everyone of you are from that era also. <laughs> I'm personally not from that era also. Uh. <laughs> the early 1980s. So I need to go through that. Okay. So history of some computer video connectors. I think all of you have seen this, right? Com com Conversa RCA. It's very old. Uh. It's 1956. Uh. And it's, it's an analog uh, port and it supports these standards. The older TV standards, uh, I think some of you may know, uh, NTSC, Pell, I think. Okay, so early computer, early uh, PCs use this, followed by this D9 port, in introduced in 1981. This is actually a digital port. Uh. Uh, so it supports these standards, which I will go through what CGA, MDA. Okay, then uh, this one, I think, I'm sure everybody knows what this is. Uh. So it's like from 1987. Again, it's by analog signal, supports VGA. This is the initial standard. Of course, today we know that this port can support a lot higher resolutions, but this was the initially supported standard. Then after that, we have digital yeah. visual interface, DVI, 1999. So this is a digital port plus analog because it also supports an analog signal. Uh, in the VGA, this, these four pins here are for the VGA. Okay. Then after that, this tool is what we use in modern times, like HDMI and display port. Okay. So you notice a, a a pattern uh, from analog to digital to analog to digital, then finally <laughs> digital. <laughs> okay, yeah, CJ and the early digital sensor that don't use the new graphics, they're not messaging. Yeah, they're just uh, on off. Yeah, I'll, I'll go through that. Yeah, yeah, is a yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how is video data sent to the monitors? Uh, specifically, uh, cattle ray monitors uh. in the past right this is how it works uh. how the monitor will work you have an electron gun and it will switch from left to right and top to bottom okay so so you can see it's back and forth okay so then the question is how does the monitor know when to go to the next line and when to go back to the top of the screen right so this is what's actually being sent from the graphics card to the monitor it's, true. It's, it's not just the video data, it's also the sync signal, the synchronization signal. So every time the electron gun goes to, for example, from left to right, right, there is actually a pulse being triggered on horizontal sync, on horizontal sync signal. So now the monitor knows, okay, now it's time to go to the next line. And so you repeat back and forth, back and forth, until it reaches the bottom, uh, then it sees there's a vertical sync signal. Okay, now it's time to go back to the top. Okay, so there's this pulse, portion uh. so what uh, all this for is basically uh there is zero video data being sent so it allows time for electron gun to go back uh to go back to zero yeah to stabilize to zero okay so the term for sync plus pot portions basically the non-viewable area is called the blanking interval okay so because of this right what you see maybe in theory is 640 by 480 but in practice, what the graphic card will send is a total of 800 by 525 pixels. Yeah, it's not exactly 640 by 480. Okay, so this style of sending uh, data to the monitor, right, is applicable for DE9, VGA, DVI, HDMI, also do the same thing. Uh, even up to the modern time, they still assume that the monitor is like a CRT. Okay, so uh, how, what is the pinout? So for DE9, right, you can see these are the three color values. The ground and now you can have the vertical sync and the horizontal sync signal. This is how the monitor knows when to go to the next line and to the next screen. Okay, for VGA port, you can see similar uh, red, green, blue, and the horizontal sync, vertical sync. The difference is in the RGB data. This is digital TTL, just on and off. This one over here is an analog value. Okay, so in these both cases, right, there is no pixel clock transmitter. So the monitor in some sense has actually has to guess what the res resolution is based on the timings of horizontal and vertical si signals. Okay, so let's come to the one retro PC I have, which is this very old machine built in 1984. You can look at the specifications. Okay, so a very old CPU, very little RAM. 
It has a <laughs> little RAM. Yeah, that's the one way combined. Uh. And then it has an 8-bit eight, eight ISA expansion slots and uses something called CJ graphics card. Okay, so now even uh, more information. What's so special about this PC? This PC is one of the three first generation PCs from IBM. Okay, so the first PC for IBM, we call IBM PC 5150. So these are all the specifications. All of them are using the same CPU Intel A0A8 4.77 megahertz. All of them are using 8 bit SAS Okay, then in 1984, IBM released an update. So this is like something like second generation. Uh, and this one uses has 16 bit ISA slots. Okay, so now the question is, why is this ISA slot thing? Okay, so ISA slots, right? ISA stands for industry standard architecture. Okay, so 8 bit and 16 bit created at different times. Uh. So these are the speeds the block that the slot supports. Uh. So the first one uh released uh for the PC XT, then 80 and above, they use a 16 bit. So the 8 bit slot is this one, 16 bit slot is this one, the longer one. Then there's a further extension to it called the Vesa local bus, which is this brown portion. Okay, so this is created in 992. You can see the speed is significantly faster. And but this bus BLB is specifically for 486 species only. Okay, so I have brought some sample cards here. Yeah, so over here, this is a South Raffle 16, 16 bit ISA slot. Over here, you can get idea of the bus around. Okay, then after that, there's a 32 bit BLB. Okay, so a VLB card is this one, oh, wow. like that, plus this one. So this is a multi-IO card. It's a hard disk controller, copy controller, it has a parallel and serial port. So it's a multi-IO. In the past, they like this card because you have to save slots. One slot, one slot can do many things. Okay. So I pass this around so you can take a look. Okay, so after this, what thing after this? PCI slots, very very component inter interconnect. Okay, so you can see it's created around the same time as a VLB. Okay, so this VLB slot didn't last very long uh, because it rapidly took over by this. Okay, so this slot lasted quite a long time. Okay, so PCI card. I have one here. This is the S3 graphics card. PCI slot here. <laughs> and see what it looks like. Okay, so after PCI, EGB, accelerated graphics card. Okay, 997. Okay, so the speed you can see, it jump quite fast. So this slot right is a uh, specifically meant for graphics card. These slots here are really for general purpose. Huh? Okay, so ATP graphics card I have one here. This is a GeForce 2. Okay, you can have something like that. Okay, so finally the model one, PCI Express. Huh? This is what we use today. Okay, so I'm not going to have any card here, PCI Express. Yeah, I think a lot of you are seeing it already. Okay, so let's come to the, the old graphics card. Huh? What is this? color graphics adapter that my IBM PC use. So this uh, standard was released in 1981 by, uh, by IBM in their first PC. La, okay? So it supports the two types of ports, the D9 and the composite RCA. Okay? 8B ISA slot over here. So the video RAM is only 16K, uh, very small. Today we have gigabytes of video RAM. Uh. <laughs> that time is like very little. And 4-bit RGB color only. Okay. So this card right is based on this display controller for Motorola called MC645. Okay, so the analogy for today's graphic card is this is like our NVIDIA GeForce, our, our AMD the, the radio right, and then the whole card right, the NVIDIA usually doesn't make the whole card right. They outsource to like ASUS or Gigabyte right. Uh, so the whole card is in this case made by IBM. So this is the analogy. Okay. And these are the standards that this graphic card supports. Okay. Uh, character, it has two modes. Uh. One of them is called the character mode. Okay, so basically the computer will just tell the graphic card, okay, please display a character at this position. Then the graphic card will display the character for you. Then there's also another type, this is graphics mode. This is where you control every single pixel. So this is the standard that it supports. Okay, uh, very low by today's standard. Uh. Okay. Then the output refresh rate, these are the horizontal and vertical values. Okay, so the Problem is on the horizontal refresh rate that CGA uses, modern monitors cannot accept this. Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk a bit more about the 4 bit uh, color. Uh. So this 4 bit color is basically just made of red, green, blue, and the intensity value, basically bright or less bright. Okay, so these are the, all the colors supported. Okay, 
So this is what we think la, when we try to merge all RGB and crack, uh, colors together. However, in practice, right, what we see on the monitor is not that, it's this one. So I take a pause here, y'all can see what's the difference between these two tables. Brown. Very obvious, like, okay, brown. <laughs> so, although uh, what we think of, of RGB is dark yellow at this position, what the monitor actually shows is brown. Strange, right? Okay, so why? Because IBM, when they created CGA, they designed to match this monitor, this color display monitor, the IBM 5053. So this monitor is a bit special when it comes to when this particular color palette number six. So when it sees this value, red and green, right, instead of displaying dark yellow, right, it will internally lower the green component value. So when you lower the green value, right, the color changes from dark yellow to brown. <laughs> The monitor does it, it's not the graphic card, it does it. Okay, okay, so now let's move on to another standard, which is called Monochrome Display Adapter, MDA. It came out exactly the same time as the CGA. So this Monochrome Display Adapter, right, uh, it is actually meant for text. It's meant for text, okay, so it's not meant for graphics. So the computer cannot tell this graphic card to display graphics. You can say this position display this character. Okay. So uh at this uh pixel uh ratio, right? So when you multiply these two, right, you get this resolution 720 by 350. But the computer cannot control each individual pixel. So the purpose of this is for high resolution text for business users. So so because business users sometimes they think they don't need to display graphics, they just need to display text. So they just they design this uh, graphics cards specifically for that purpose. Okay, so these are the uh, refresh rates. Horizontal, this refresh rate is not supported by modern monitors. So. Okay, so they, they pair this graphics card with this monitor, 5151. Okay, it can only have two bit monochrome. Pixel value on and off at the intensity, how bright it is. Perfect. Hmm? She is perfect. Yeah, yes. Uh, also. Also, if you do CPA and FDA together, yes, you can have like two screens, one of them that's going to be better than the other one. Yes, and yes, <laughs> that's correct. Okay, so what, 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 uh, what I say is correct because these two operate at different memory addresses. Yeah, okay, so I'll come to the graphics gravity project. So, this project was uh, open source one released in May 2021. Okay, so it's a basically an open source uh, FPGA graphics card that can do both CGA and FDA. The ports that support are DE9 Composite and VGA. Okay, it's created by this guy, uh, uh, Eric Scheffler, I don't pronounce his name, uh, at, uh, at his hardware engineer at Google. Okay, so the, as he open source it, the purpose of this uh, is that because the modern monitors cannot support the CGA MDA frequencies, so he created this graphic card to solve that problem. And he also has a VGA port, which is relatively more modern uh, compared to DE9 Composite. Uh, okay. So let me pass around the uh, original graphics gambling part here. Okay, so you can look at the size difference. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes. Very big guy, right? yes. Basically, it combines CGA and MDA into one card, uh, thanks to modern technology. Thanks to SMB. Uh, that's MD and FPGA. Uh. <laughs> okay, so what, what is, uh, how does it work? So it uses this FPGA, ice 40 from that this. The, uh, the two chain is from Project ice so it's open source. Uh, and the HDL is very long. Okay, so to make it compatible with the old monitors, he changed the CJ uh, resolution from 640-200 to 640-400 through a technique called scan doubling. I'll go through that in a while. Okay, and for NDA, he increased the vertical refresh rate from 50 hertz to 70 hertz. So the mon modern monitors can uh, accept this. Okay, so to select between CJ and MDA, the user can just toggle the switch uh, to what you want. Like, then you just power cycle the card, then you get the correct mode. Okay. And the cool thing about this card is that if you don't display anything, the card by default will show a text pattern. So the left side is CGA, the right side is NDA. Uh, so at least it tells you that the card is working without having to connect a computer to it. Okay. So I fabricated this card and I found actually there are two problems uh, in this thing. Okay. So the first problem is that the composite and VGA port cannot work together. It's because 
he shared the, he, the way he designed the card, the pin of the composite is shared with EGA. So to select them, right, you need to toggle the switch and sort of reduce, power cycle the card. So it's a problem of my system because this one runs on composite. Composite la. So when so when I I need the internal monitor, the VGA is not available. So I cannot connect external monitor to it. Then if I connect external monitor to it, I cannot use the internal composite display. So I, I need both. Okay. <laughs> then another thing is that a VGA port is being deprecated of modern monitor. If you all realize you all buy a modern screen, right? A lot of them don't come in VGA anymore already. And our modern TVs also don't have VGA anymore already. So you need to add another extra adapter to convert the VGA to HDMI. Okay, which actually there's a signal loss uh, to that uh, because it's analog to digital conversion. Okay, so I decided to improve this card design. Okay, so the left side is the original one, the right side is mine. Okay, uh, that's the card sound, uh, the one with HDMI port. Okay, so the HDMI, I added HDMI port. To support the HDMI port, I need to add a DVI transmitter. Okay, and the power consumption of the port now increases. I need to change the power regulator to a 3M1. Okay. And after that, I need to adjust the very lot as well because the card doesn't know about this digital, this HDMI output. Okay. The, the high level process of what I do, I first had to learn the CGA MDA graphics standards. Like what, what I, all the uh, details I told you just now. Okay. Then after that, I had to research the FPGA HDMI specifications, what this FPGA can or cannot do, and the HDMI, what it actually requires uh, to display through it. I started the project in August 2021. Uh, that's two years ago already. Then after I picked up the very lot for you, Danny, because prior to this project, right, I did not know anything about very lot. I designed the card first before I learned very lot. <laughs> okay. Then after that, once I learned very lot, I first had to understand this code base. Like, wow, how does it actually work? Uh? Then after that, I developed a testing. Okay. So why did I have to add a DVI transmitter over there? Okay. So HDMI and DVI, uh, they use uh, this signaling standard called trans transition minimized differential. So TMDS. The this FPJ does not support this capability. Okay, so yeah, so I cannot directly connect it to HDMI port. And then also, uh, I decided I need to use transmitter, and this transmitter accepts data in a 24 bit color input and then output TMDS for me. Uh. Okay, so since I have to add a line driver anyway, right, might as well I add a good one. Okay, then uh, DVI does not require license. So actually, I'm using DVI, but it's not really official HDMI. To use official HDMI, right, you need to buy the rights from the HDMI Foundation or something. I need to pay them like five to ten thousand a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to officially use HDMI. And thankfully, like DVI is interoperable to HDMI with, to some extent. Okay, so let me go through this. So you can on the left is a DVI pin now, on the right is HDMI pin now. You can see the signaling like TMDS, almost like very similar, right? So in fact, right, DVI and HDMI are electrically interoperable. So you can actually find passive adapters online. I think I have it here. Let me check it out. Yeah, you can see this is an example of a DVI and HDMI adapter. We have the canvas. Entirely passive. Okay. Only one layer. Go, go for it. No, I said only one HDMI to DVI. No, the other way also can. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming that. <laughs> Assuming yes. the standards are yeah the digital portion, assuming you are using the same standard. Uh, okay. HDMI has something called a DVI compatibility mode. You can actually send a DVI signal through the HDMI monitor also. It's required because the standard says so. Okay. But the problem is uh you cannot have true HDMI support. Uh, so you need the license to do that, which means that I cannot send audio through it. Is it the same story with like the compatibility between display for HDMI? Oh, so you need an active adapter for that. Uh. Yeah, so there are different standards. Uh, uh. So the thing that you're saying is you have display for the HDMI. Then we'll not have uh, yeah, but display port is harder to handle than HDMI. It's a packetized uh, way of handling. It's oh. it's, because HDMI is actually very similar to VGA. Because they are they follow the, the this electron gun signal in. Yeah, okay, let me let me go to this I uh, understand why. So to integrate this chip right to the FPGA, right, this chip will require a clock signal, the color signal, as well as, as the horizontal sync, vertical sync, and display editable. So if you notice it's very similar to VGA. Yeah. It is, yeah. So HDMI actually they they they, they start from DVI and DVI start from VGA. They they as in the way that they they follow the standards. 
So it's actually easier to go to this to the DVI route. Okay, so how I wire this uh, red, green, blue on the most significant bit, the intensity I put it on the second most in uh, second most uh, significant bit. Uh, the green intensity uh, I will do a special handling. I'll come to that in a while. So but so basically the green one I have a special line for that. Okay, so this part all the same, and there's additional pin required, which is a display animal. This is for the watches. Uh, so the very long changes I have to make, I have to support this transmitter, handle the brown color, then I add other some feature to change the MDA color and some modes which I'm going to do in a while. These two modes, display over scan at 70 hertz. So uh, how did I modify the, the very long code inside? This is the original one for CGA. They, he had a module inside to emulate that MC6845 chip. Okay. So the signal from this will go to a scan doubler. Okay, so the scan doubler basically doubles the number of vertical lines. So how this works is that it uses a technique called double buffering. When the computer writes out the array uh, data for one line, right, it's stored for one array. At the same time, right, uh, the graphics will send out data for another array and double the circle. So in the time the computer can write one array, right, the graphics will, will write out data for two, uh, two twice on the same array. Then after that, at the end of line, both arrays are swapped. And the, the output of the scan doubler will go to another module that talks to the VGA port. Okay, so I need to add one more, one more very log module here, so to take the data from here. Okay, yeah. And this line, display enable. So the display enable, right, on VGA is not used. So I had to actually modify the code here slightly, pass it over to here, and modify the code here to also catch the display enable as part of the arrays. So this double display animal will then also be sent to the, the this very log module. It's the display part of the It's the post portion. So the okay let me go back to oh okay so okay can I okay let me continue. Okay so after uh, let's say if you don't handle the brown this is my, the, all, the first iteration of my graphic card right so you can see over here it is actually dark yellow. There's this special program that you can I, I download. Uh, they basically display the entire color palette. So at least you know where it might go wrong. Uh. Okay, so brown is displayed incorrectly and stuck yellow. Okay. The thing is modern monitors uh, do not do this special case like this IG 553 monitor. It's a hack uh, in the old one. So modern monitors don't care about this. Okay. So if it is handled, this is the difference. So this is the latest iteration of my, of my design. Uh, so it's handled here. So it looks correct now, it's brown. Okay, so how this is done because of this special pin over here, that this green intensity pin is specially treated compared to the blue and the red. Okay, so on the, when the graphics card sees this value, right, the, the red and green on and intensity and blue zero, right, then it will do something special. Okay, so if the logic will, it will change. So this is the usual case, zero and one. When I see this uh, value, right, these two will change. I will now change the green to zero and green intensity one. Okay, so the very lock code to do this is right? actually this. So I didn't come up with this, someone actually suggested to me this one. So to especially only flip these two, all other case will keep copy over basically. Okay, then MDA colors. Uh, the original design only supported one color, which is amber. I don't like amber, so I thought, okay, let's have a choice, <laughs> different colors. Because in the old in the old days, MDA the color choice is up to the monitor to decide. They don't specify this. Okay, and there's something called a display overscan mode. Okay, so display overscan uh basically means I display the porch area, which by right should not be the case. But uh, there's a demo called Area Fifty One Fifty. This uh, the creator of this demo actually reached out to me. Uh, then he said that can you try to display the overscan because he used the overscan for something. Okay, so uh the original resolution is supposed to be 640 by 400. When I display the overscan, right, it goes up to here. Lah. So the blue sections here are the overscan portion. Okay, and realize that it is a modern 4K monitor. Lah. So, so my, my old PC, uh, my almost 40 year old PC is directly connected to a modern 4K monitor with no adapters. Lah. <laughs> What's a small monitor? Sorry? A small monitor. Oh, that's a comp composite. Oh, 
I I connect from outside. So then make sure the signal comes from the input. It makes it now. Ah, I'll show a bit of the demo. Yeah, so a bit. Yes, running on that. It can run. Huh? It can because okay, the this porch right basically display here is actually to help the body let you have some alignment with the body. Just the porch, not the yeah, not the sink, the porch only. Okay. So I display this one here. The sink cannot, of course, cannot. So uh let me show a quick uh video of this one. Uh. Wait, wait, this is the top. Wait, let me see the time strength 413. Okay, so you can see that the porch area color changes, right? Yeah, so he uses as part of his effects. Uh. Okay, so he asked me to try to display it. Yeah, it works. Uh. Uh, uh, not all monitors accept this uh, uh, because it's a very weird resolution. Uh. Yeah, so I have to use this my 4K monitor to do it. Okay, so uh, another one which is the CJ 70 hertz. Why like that? So if you go to the DVI specification document, right, they say that the minimum uh, resolution uh, is 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. Okay. But the problem is right, the, the resolution that this graphical output right is 640 by 400 at 60 hertz. We are missing 80 on <laughs> here. Okay. So theoretically, we are actually below what the specification says. Uh. So by right, the monitor can reject the signal. Uh. But so far, I tested right on my own monitors. They seem to be okay with it. I think because I didn't deviate too far from this. Uh. But in case some monitors cannot accept it, right? So I have I, I added an additional mode uh, to increase the pixel clock to 70 hertz. Uh. There's actually an extra setting, yeah, in the card. Okay. Uh, okay. Then another uh, issue is debugging uh, debugging difficulties during development. So uh, when you dis when you ask the monitor to display something odd, uh, a message like this may come out. Uh. Okay, so basically I read out for you the current input timing is not supported by the monitor display. Please change your input timing to some value. Okay, so they will not tell you why is it wrong. They just tell you something is wrong. And sometimes the worst, they don't even display anything. <laughs> so this makes it difficult for me. Uh. Okay, so I use uh, some of these tools in my development. Okay, the first one is I use a logic analyzer. So I have uh, some I have a debug pin header here, I plug it in, and then I seal, I look at the value, where could possibly be wrong. Yeah. So it supports uh yeah, this these specifications. You can see this is a sample screen capture uh, of the tool. Yeah, so it really helped me a lot. The second one is I use another FPGA to display the data because again, imagine if you try to debug this, there's millions of logic levels and how can I go and trace out every single one of them? I cannot. Uh. So uh, I need a way to display the value. And the only uh, other device that can catch up with the FPGA is another FPGA <laughs> over here. So I pipe the data over to my another FPGA board. This is a Xilinx Arctic 7 um, or, uh, chip over there. Okay. Then I write another project over there to take this signal value and output to its native HDMI port. So the Arctic 7 supports native TMDS. So I, I based on another project, I modify a bit and legally display over here. So it also helped me to troubleshoot what's wrong. Okay, I have another 46 PC. So after I finish all this, I plug this to my 46 PC. <laughs> okay, so what is so good about this is that my 46 PC supports all this, is it supports easy changing of the color graphics mode in the BIOS. I just select this, it goes to that mode. So it's easy for me to test. On my IBA PC, right, I need to flip the switches there. And there's a 40 year old PC. I, I basically if I keep flipping too many times, I, the thing might not last. Uh. <laughs> okay, so I, I use my 46 PC for that. So once it's done, right, then I put to my IBM PC. Okay, so the IBM PC, you can see now, case they might I think this must be the first one. <laughs> the first, first gen IBM PC with a HDMI port. <laughs> first and only one. Okay. Well, the, the on the right, cable uh, cable yeah, tie, cable tie, yeah. <laughs> cable tie. Because I, I didn't. Make a bracket for this. Uh. Oh. Yeah, so it's tied down the ball, so it doesn't fly out. Uh. Okay. Okay, so uh oh, they, they so someone uh yeah, they asked me now yeah, modern graphics can support. Actually, right, you see there's this YouTube uh, video someone actually did uh, they wrote FS stores on AMD Ryzen Gaming PC. So 
actually, right, modern graphics card, right, supports uh, CG and DA also. Yeah, because it's required as standard, they support VGA and VGA is backward compatible with CG and DA. But uh, in practice, right, it may be buggy. Like. See, it's not very perfect, but it's still legible, usable. Uh. Okay. And this guy, right, he, uh, recently I saw this video. He run Windows 3.1 and DOS on the Intel 13th Gen CPU. It shows you the backward compatibility all the way to the early OS. And this is a VGA mode. This shows, it shows that, yeah, deep down in every modern graphics card, they support CJ and DA as well. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do a, a quick demo using the graphics card here. Let me power it on. And I connect to the projector. Yeah. Ah, that's too bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me go to the projector's menu. Okay, see what the monitor, the projector says 640 by 460 hertz. Uh. Okay, the graphical can directly connect to a modern projector. Okay, so now, right, I will. This is a test method, CJ, so you can look at all the colors. You can see the brown and the red, it's very close. Okay, so let me go to NDA mode. Okay, so now NDA 720 by 350 at 70 hertz. Okay, then now I set different colors, green right now, white. Red, yellow. Just flip the setting on the card, then you just go to different color. Yeah. I don't have. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't like. I don't like ever. I hate that. So I try all this. Great, different color. So yeah, happy. Your name color, right? Okay, so uh, to the last slide, the conclusion. Okay, so I completed my first FPJ project. Yeah, this is my first FPJ project. Before that, I already closed the thing. Okay, so this is my first FPJ project. I picked up the, my first HDL very long. Okay, I picked up a lot of the graphics display standards. I first had to understand all the graphics display standards before I can start to design, redesign the board. Okay, and knowing more about the past, I feel help us, help us understand the present matter. Because uh, now I know how all these uh like the signaling works, right? It actually applies up to HDMI. You would think that even a modern HDMI is still designed in a way to support the old CRT monitor. Uh, and I also have to thank the guy Eric uh, for open sourcing the original project. If not, uh, there's no way for me to do it. Uh. Yeah. I I think I just basically improved like only 10% of his work. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a video of that yeah. because he didn't explain to the video. Some parts are not supported because the original graphics uh, didn't support it. And it's very hard for me to troubleshoot that. But there must be tricks that can't possibly work if you're running against the same graphics, uh, right? Because if, if the CRTC has weakened in the yes. middle of the frame, then it's going to be yes. a different. Uh, it will be different. That's not, in some portions of the demo, right? The monitor, monitor just does not accept it. It mm. cannot work. Yeah, but it's just a I think most most of the time people don't run that work. Run normal normal work should be okay. <laughs> right. okay. In the in the older media, you would actually detect the end of line and it was at this and all the chips internally. You would actually run some code to change the palette, etc. There was a massive amount of fix. And the vigilant analyzer is an FPJ test. Yes, it is. It is. So I think Sparta 6. Uh, uh, yeah, six. Yeah. Okay, because his original code doesn't have a lot of tests in the first place. Mm. So it's very hard for me to add tests to it already. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just running to see the image there. A bit difficult. A bit hard. I thought it was just easier to go straight, see the output. Uh, so you're starting to see your information take time to also when you're running around and create. You can see that. So so the way it works is either it does not work at all, or it works just fine. You mean on the monitor? Yeah. The monitor, yeah. The monitor either so, accepts or so, that, yeah. So I think it just works or doesn't. Yes, that's a problem, yeah. So that's why I need to trouble debug it. Oh, maybe a problem. So that's what you figure Yeah, because it'd be weird if you're still thinking like it works, but then there's something funny. Yes. I'm thinking about the brown color thing. So you showed in the schematic that it had a separate pin to the green pin to show that it was a brown color. Why did it need a separate pin? Couldn't you just do it in the, the, the bytes that we're going through? Okay, can we simply go back there? Uh, you go, you go to the intensity yeah. so I yeah know. oh okay yeah oh, yeah what this yeah so it's to actually give a means to actually lower the value so i use green intensity and i set this to zero so the second msb is off the first msb oh, is off. Yeah. Yeah. because you're only using one okay yeah what uh, you're not using all the okay. same thing by spotting the particular four bit pattern that is yes. dark yellow why do you want to do that sorry i see again why is there an extra pin there? Why not just use the fact that the four bits? Okay, uh, you mean. So you, you have like four, three times eight bits or something input of the API encoder, right? Four bits. No, yeah. the read API encoder, you have a lot of. 24, bits. yeah, here. Yeah. So you're oh. only using two of the four bits. I say a bit more, I connect here, yeah. So only this not Two of eight bits, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, actually up to here also. Because the FPJ, it, okay, in theory, I want to connect more, but FPJ, I run out of pins already. It's all maxed out. I cannot connect anymore to it. Yeah. So the one issue was actually when they designed the monitor, they had that. Then later, they did the, the VGA standard suddenly so had that specific color that they wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. So on the for a VGA graphics card, right? They connect to a VGA. The VGA monitor doesn't do this this hack. So actually, the VGA graphics card internally will do the brown shift to brown. So do you have any examples of games or pictures or something where if it's not brown, then it doesn't be bright? Ah, okay. Like I've never heard of it. I have, yeah. So I, I let me see. Yeah, uh, I think I saw a. Uh, I wait. Let me see. Yeah, uh, I thought I saw a video. Uh, I cannot find the website. I can't read. I forgot where is it. Uh, there's someone he actually converted it to dark yellow. I think I can't find it. Yeah. Ah, okay. This website, correct. So, yeah, okay. So, in this website, right? Yeah, you see? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think this is that. Uh, okay. Let me see. Yeah. I remember I saw. I can't really remember, but I think the color should be like that. Yeah, dark yellow and the uh, brown. Yeah, the, the, the brightness will be a bit different now, but the, that's the different. Yeah. Okay. Ah, perfect. Canonical CGA colors and IBA 54, 53. Yeah, there's a difference. Is that one? No, it's not like it's not like it. Broken. Yeah, it's not much of a difference, but if you're specifically looking for it, uh, you will find a difference. Uh. So some uh, then if you specifically look for this, uh, then you'll see. Uh, yeah. It's not different. Quite obvious actually. At this brown. Yeah. 